Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanalei Zedan. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this next match is going to be Dying Threat and Aquanim on Badlands. And already we see the factory, Dying Threat going for the Spiderbot factory, while Aquanim goes for the Shieldbot factory and goes for an early convict, not an early dirtbag. Dying Threat, on the other hand, going for early fleas because that's what Spider does early fleas for scouting. And this map, this map with the cliffs and all this, this is super important for spiders. Spiders do extremely well on this map. Or at least they did the last time. I, like, like I said, I played Dying Friend on this map with this matchup an hour ago. So, this is annoying. And it looks like, okay, Dying Friend is sending fleas out to every single corner. Which makes a lot of sense. Make sure you know if your opponent's going to the side expansions. Double check, you know, they're going along the ridges. Check the center as well. Not really paying attention to the inside of the base. Just checking around all the places where players are likely to go. While well, Aquanim... With a couple dirt bags, a couple bandits. Not finding any of the fleas so far. Well, finding one of them. But the important thing is Dynthrin basically has good knowledge of most important lanes on the map. And I imagine that they might actually find... Yeah, it looks like Aquanim's going to find Dynthrin's other flea. Does find it, does take it out. So a couple of the fleas are down. But that does also give away some of Aquanim's movements. And Aquanim also scouting out the southeast corner and the northwest corner with dirt bags. While Dying Throne getting their Venom Hermit. They're going to be going Venom Hermit. That's going to be the game. It's going to be Venom Hermit from Dying Throne. How can I'm, I'm curious what they're going to go for. I'm expecting something... Man, with Venom Hermit. I'm actually kind of curious. I really am. This is one of those things where I'm watching it almost to learn as much as I am to talk about what's going on. Because this map is an uphill battle. Like, it... Many uphill battles, in fact. And that is a problem when you're playing against spiders, because spiders love fighting uphill battles. Because they're on top of the hill the easiest. Like, you're fighting uphill to them. So they love it. It's absolutely beautiful for them. For everybody else, it's a pain in the butt. At this point, Aquanim purely focused entirely on bandits. Dying Friend focused much more on Venoms. Which, like I said, that's the stage of the game we're at. I would expect that what will end up happening is Aquanim's probably not going to be going too far forward. Like, they're probably going to try to stop Venoms where they can. One thing I found is that, obviously, you can't really fight Venoms head-on. It's just tricky, especially with the terrain. It's tricky to do it because you, you're trying to circle around. You're trying to make your units far enough apart that the Venom can't stop them. But it's tricky because they're also trying to find the shortest path. And down hills, that often means they're clumping up because the shortest path is usually all go down the hill and then move into your positions. But Aquanim's doing a nice job here. Very good surround on the Venom. Didn't really take a lot of damage. The Dirtbag getting stunned a bit, but Aquanim's commander already in the southeast. So that's a good start. Dimefriend's commander going towards the northwest from the looks of it. And Dimefriend, well aware of what's going on here. Like, they know where Aquanim's commander is. They know that there's some defenses going on. That flea is in a perfect spot. It has not been spotted yet. The other fleas all have been spotted. Except this one over here. So the fleas outside of the corners have been spotted. The other ones are still open. And Diamond Friends Commander moving forward. Pushing away the bandits and making that northwest corner basically Diamond Friends. It's going to be kind of hard for Aquanim to take that at this point. However, Aquanim does have the southeast corner. Doesn't actually have anything built up for it yet. Just setting up all the defenses and some power. Nothing in the main base though. Surprisingly enough, Aquanim hasn't really built up around their main base towards the northwest. They built up the path towards the southeast, and Dying is a bit more focused on building around their main base. Like, they're probably going to have more metal in a few seconds. Or at least a few more expansions. Yeah, because this expansion is going to come up, and now Dying Throne's up to plus 15 or so. Aquanim's slightly behind. But it's more that Aquanim isn't really building up very much at the moment. Dying Throne building up a lot more, getting some reclaim as well, which Aquanim not really going for the reclaim around their base, or in between bit more focused on setting up defenses. I mean, it makes sense. You're dealing with the fact that you cannot fight uphill. You're fighting spiders. So you have to basically start at the top of the hill and force the spiders to go uphill for once. But at this point, Aquanim just really focused. Like, that's what they want to do. They're focused on defenses. They want to make sure that the defenses are there, but Dying Friend's also getting defenses. And getting a lot of defenses. Mostly on the low ground, surprisingly enough. But getting a lot of defenders on the low ground and probably going to come up the sides of the hills before going towards and already... Defenders just getting rid of Lotuses. Aquanim. Okay, now they're going for some more reclaim. Where's the reclaim happening? 
Hmm. At any rate, Stardust on top of the hill to help out. So this this is a pretty strong defensive line. The southeast corner is pretty well taken by Aquinum. The northwest corner has actually not really been claimed. Dying Throne slowly but surely going over there, but the southeast corner, that is what matters. Good, okay. So Racketeers, that's a very good option. That makes a lot of sense, what you want to use there. It looks like Bandit Racketeer is probably... It looks like that's Aquinum's strategy here. Pure Bandit Racketeer. Use Racketeer to stun off most of the defenses and the Bandits to rip apart everything and also possibly use the Racketeer to stun out the Venom while ripping apart the Venoms with the Bandits. So we'll see how that goes. Looks like it's kind of hard with only one Racketeer. I mean, that's, that seems to be the biggest problem right now is that with only one Racketeer, dealing with the Venom is proving darn near impossible. However, our retreat, retreat has been forced. Not a whole lot of production going on for Aquinum, though. Finally getting back into production, and Dimefriend into Venom and Hermit. And it looks like Dimefriend's probably just building up a lot more. Like, I feel like Aquinum's lack of production is really not working out too well for them. I mean, they have... Now they have the character being built up, but yeah, that's, that's not great. They don't have the production. They do have the economy, but they don't have a whole lot of units. The Hermits are up. Venoms are up as well. The Bandits cannot really engage head-on. Not without killing themselves, at least, which rather defeats the purpose of engaging. But that is pretty much... That's not going to be easily dealt with unless there are enough Racketeers to stop the Venoms. Then the Hermits can be taken out easily. Like, then it's no problem. And both Venoms have been disabled. Or rather, disarmed. Ooh. One disarm shot misses, but yeah, this is a problem because the bandits are coming down. This is what I mean, exactly what I mean. Although, admittedly, they were kind of being point moved, but still, that's kind of what I mean. They want to go down the hill and take a quick path down the hill before getting to the flat ground. So it's rather difficult to deal with that. Rather difficult to keep your units separated when you're going up and down hills. And Dying Friend with the northwest corner now is setting up their defenses. And actually, not really many defenses. Looks like they're just setting up some radar, not really worried about being attacked. Aquinum has put no effort into taking the south, the northwest. And I mean the northwest near their main base. They're focused entirely on the southeast. They have all the defenses at the, south, the southeast, and I don't think Dying Friend even cares anymore. Like they have a front line set up, they have a defense line set up. But at the same time, the northwest is open. Dying Friend's just taking it. Aquinum doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. They're focused very narrowly. So Dying Friend... Looks like they're just going to take advantage of that open northwest side, and indeed they are. Aquinum with no defenses over there, Dimethrind powering through with a bunch of Venoms and Hermits. Continuing along with, like I said, the Venom Hermit strategy, that works remarkably well in this matchup. And Outlaws coming out, which I don't think will work. I tried them myself. And also, theoretically speaking, the Venoms are probably going to stop that. Like... How are the Outlaws going to get close enough to deal with the Venoms if the Venoms just stun them? Or stun things nearby them, and by proxy stun them? I realize Outlaws have a lot more health than Bandits, but even then, it only takes two shots from a Venom, because they have like 600 Paralysis. So that's the problem. The Outlaws won't really be stunned out. Looks like there's a lot of production going on there, and an Athena on top of that. So the Athena helping out with some Recluses... Ooh, I see. Interesting. Go for the really long-range skirmisher. That makes sense. Bit of an outside way to do it using the Athena. You don't usually see Athena usage. This is very remarkable. This this does not happen. It's cool when it does, but it never happens. And on top of that, an air switch coming up for Aquinum. Dying Friend, on the other hand, doesn't look like any factory switches are planned. Going for Crab, they're really just focusing on finishing this up with spiders. And also, what did I say about Outlaws? Yeah. Not really the thing to do. But, looks like Reckless is the option. Reckless with Air Switch. And Orphelia is pointing out their opinion that Reckless is not a good idea. Which, I'm not sure I understand because Reckless... I mean, okay, it's not super accurate. I'll give you that. But, Recklesses are still going to be able to deal with this from a range perspective. Now, granted, so can Racketeers, so, eh. I guess the Racketeer Bandit thing is just not really working for Bandits, because getting up the hill is proving a problem. 
At this point, Dimefren taking the entire north... Well, they're taking the western side. Akronim's got a weak hold in the eastern side, but overall the economy's relatively even. Both players are just on par with each other. Nothing really remarkably different, and now the Reckless is just hammering it a bit. Making making life a little bit harder for Dimefren. They can't easily come in, and now, coming in, dealing with Reckless's and... Sorry, the Racketeers and Bandits. The Bandits being the major problem here. That's the thing. As soon as, as, soon as Dimefren crossed that hill and went down that slope, those Bandits were on them. Like, they were on them like fleas. Except, not the fleas in the game, but like fleas in your dog. That kind of flea. They're just on them. And killing them. Which also is not like the fleas in your dog. That's more like the fleas in the game. But yeah, in various definitions of the word flea, those bandits stuck to that group of permits. It was more like barnacles, actually. Yeah. And once again over the hill, and once again taking a lot of damage as the bandits are able to get free shots, and Dimefren's commander forced to retreat, the Racketeer is also forced to retreat, and here's where Recluses can work well, a giant clumped up group of units, except on a hill, so the Recluses actually overshoot them, which is rather unfortunate, but still, a huge amount of damage all inside of, of Aquinum's territory, away from Dimefren's territory. Aquinum can turn this into a nice gold mine, or metal mine, rather. I mean, this convict right there. Two convicts right there! So much reclaim! How much reclaim? A thousand metal reclaim, which in a 1v1 game is actually quite a lot. So yeah, a thousand metal reclaim coming in here for half the Wyvern. There you go. And indeed, we are seeing some reclaim going on. It looks like most of it is happening thanks to this rock from Aquinum's commander. But even then, there's a lot of reclaim over here. The problem, of course, being the crab. But the the thing about the crab is that you just have the racketeers. I mean, that makes the crab an odd choice, in all honesty, because the racketeers are basically the counter to the crab, and now that it's moving, it's completely disabled. Or disarmed, rather. The only thing that... Uh, Dianfunded really only has the fact that Aquinum's bandit is... The bandit army's kind of gone. That's the only thing that Dianfunded has going for them. They've managed to work through the bandit army, and it's not getting replaced. Instead, the wyvern is being the focus, and that wyvern isn't going to be done for another 20 seconds, and even when it's done, it's not going to deal enough damage to really justify itself. Nice Thunderbird usage there, stopping most of the Hermits, but even then, that's temporary. There's not a whole lot that can be done here, and a lot of Fleas. Ooh, nice little traps of Fleas from Athena's here. Just, if you can't get a Spiderbot Factory, I mean, you can get a Spiderbot Factory, but apparently going for the Athena instead, because why not? Instead of a Spiderbot Factory. I mean, with the Recklesses alone, wasn't sure, but now I'm not sure at all. Like, really, what the heck? And that Thunderbird... Wow, that's actually a really bad move. That's going to stop the Racketeers from doing anything. By the time the Racketeers are able to work again, the Spiderbot Factory, or Spiderbot units, will also be able to work again, and nearly suicidal hit from that Wyvern there. And this is game. Dimefren getting inside of Aquinum's base. Aquinum, unfortunately, because they stunned their own units out, they could not kill everything off while they were trying to kill everything. While... While Dimefren's units were stunned, Aquinum's units couldn't do anything. And the more important problem is the crab here, which is just firing in. Doesn't really care. It's doing its thing. And Dimefren's commander, wow. Okay. Getting taken out pretty convincingly. But even then, Dimefren is in such an advantageous position that Thunderbird, I mean, it wasn't a bad idea. It worked okay, it's just that kind of too a little too late and didn't take out the thing that really mattered, namely, the crab. And the rest of the army, like I said, gets getting stunned out alongside Aquinums and Aquinum not having the bandit army to deal with that, to make use of the disable, of all the disarm. So yeah, I mean, good ideas coming in from Aquinum. I'm not sure about the recluses, that worked okay. The Thunderbird, if that had come sooner, if that had come instead of the, the Athena, that probably would have just done the trick. Like, set up the Thunderbird, rush in, stun everything out, and then wipe it out with bandits. That seems to be the way to go. Or, my preferred solution would be take Badlands out of the 1v1 map pool to begin with. Because this was a match-made game. I personally don't like this map very much. It's kind of worn off its charm for me. It's a very defensive map. It's a map you really have to set up all these defenses on the ridges, and Spiderbot doesn't really care. Granted, I like Spiderbot, so maybe I should just play Spiderbot on this map. This is just the spider map. 
Yeah. And Orphilius arguing for a counter crab. I guess we're spotted by the factory counter crab or Athena. Does Athena build crabs? Athena's got such a random build list, I don't even remember what he can build. Anyway, like, nobody uses Athena. It's super rare. I'm glad to see it. It's just really rare. So, after that bizarre match, we have one more match. This will be Google Frog and 400 on Eye of Horus. There's a map we haven't seen in a while. Mostly because Drone hasn't played in a while and it's their favorite map. Anyhow, that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned for that. Because that's what's next. <laughs> 